Hi, I'm Lawrence Edwards from Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the gas fat and oxalic sublimation. Um, now, first thing to say is whenever you're doing any form of oxalic sublimation, please make sure you're using a registered product. The only legal product to use in, in a gas fat, sublimox, varox, or any other product is apibioxal. That's the only one that's legal to use in the UK. So please, if you're sublimating oxalic acid or any other type of product, please use the correct product and that is apibioxal and that's what we're using today. Um, so today's video is gonna be a review of the gas fap. Now the gas fap is a very, very simple way of sublimating any oxalic acid product. It works with a blowtorch and some copper fittings like that. And it's really simple how it's been put together. Uh, now, I know a lot of people really, really like the gas fat. And I have to say, unfortunately, it's not my favorite tool. Um, and I'll go into the reasons why. And it's not to say that there's not a useful place for it kind of within a beekeeper's arsenal. Um, but for me and for the number of hives that I've got, I prefer to use other products. Um, so this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the gas fat. I'm going to kind of show you the construction. I'll show you how it works, how you apply the oxalic. Um, and then I'll tell you a few of the reasons why I'm not overly sold on it. So, like I say, it works with a blowtorch. So you're using a propane gas and you fill that up underneath. Um, so you need to make sure that you carry kind of additional propane with you. You don't want to run out when you're doing this. And then it's a, a set of copper fittings that are soldered together using, I believe, a silver solder um, so that it can kind of withstand the heat that comes from the propane torch. Um, it fits in like that and then you apply the oxalic acid in there and then it fires the sublimate out like that into your hive. So it's a very simple design um, and that's kind of reflected in the price of it. It's nowhere near as expensive as the Sublimox which is kind of like 300, 350 pounds. Um, it's actually cheaper than the Varox which I found to be a very cumbersome tool indeed. Um, so I had really high hopes for this and I thought that this is going to replace the Sublimox for me. Um, the things that I really liked about it before I had one was the idea that I didn't have to carry around a battery pack. I didn't have to carry around a generator, battery or generator. I wasn't restricted to using cables. Um, like th those two or three things on their own meant it was really, really appealing to me. Um, also that I could kind of keep it in the car. I mean, it's very small and I could keep it in the car and then I could treat as and when I needed. There was very little preparation. I didn't need to go and get the battery or the generator or the extension lead or any of those things. Um, and I do, I still keep this in my car, in the back of the truck, um, but I use it for very, very specific activities. I don't use it to treat all of my hives. I use the Sublimox to do that. And the reason that I do that is <laughs> I'm not overly sold on the torch. So the torch for me is unreliable. And I know that's not like, not having a go at the guy who designed that. I think that's a really, really neat design. Um, there are issues with it that I don't like, but overall he's solved a, <laughs> solved a problem there and come up with a good product. But it comes down to this, they're unreliable, the torches. Um, and I find that I could be kind of working, maybe get through like 10, 15 hives and then I either run out of propane. Okay, that's my fault or the torch goes faulty. And I've had that twice now where I've been out doing it and the torch has just gone. So whether the ignition's gone on it, like I'm not sure they're designed for kind of extended use. So if you've got one or two hives in your garden and you're looking at a way of kind of applying apibioxal, by all means, I think this actually works quite well. There's a few other issues with it that I'm not overly keen on, but again, that kind of comes down to my routine and my methods um, and it doesn't specifically suit me. So it does. It, it may well suit other people. So don't don't think that's it. I'm not going to get that product now. There's definitely a use for it. Um, so my main my main gripes with the product as a whole is the, the propane torch. I think it's unreliable. Um, if you could find a really super reliable propane torch to go with it, that would improve it somewhat. Um, my other main and this is a big issue with it is that it gets very very hot. Now. I can't use the plastic gloves that I normally use with it. So I've had to try and kind of find some welder's gloves to go with it because as you're applying the uh, the apibioxal into the lid there, the little caps that come with it, they get so hot. 
Um, you definitely can't do it with a plastic glove. You, you, you need a real kind of heavy duty protective heat glove, um, which I found quite cumbersome. And then I found it difficult to find one that had the long cuffs as well. Um, and then I ended up putting that over another glove. So it just added a whole kind of um, extra layer of protection that I needed to be able to operate it. Now, if I could find a reliable torch, I could probably get over the fact that it was a bit too hot on my hands and that I needed a different set of gloves. But it comes down to me, to the reliability of this item and the reliability of the torch in particular. Where I use the Sublimox, I've never had a single failed operation of the tool. Like it gets up to heat, and then I can do 100, 200 shots on it, maybe take like three or four hours. As long as I've got enough fuel in the generator, it's never gonna fail on me. Um, so I'm gonna get kitted up and I'm gonna show you how this works. Another final thing to say is please, please, please take adequate precaution whenever you're doing any sublimation of any oxalic products. You need to make sure you have adequate eye protection, adequate protection on your hands, but most importantly, you need to have adequate protection to cover any of it entering into your lungs. So you need a proper, I recommend a full face um, mask, one that's certified for organic vapor. That's the one you're looking for. And then that means that you're not breathing any of this in. Um, it's horrible, horrible stuff. Don't get it in your lungs. It can cause serious damage. Um, and apart from that, it's a really horrible thing to get into your lungs as well. Like it makes you cough, it's not nice. So just take all the precautions you can and you should be okay using it. So as I said before, um, I've got a couple of these masks now. They're really, really good. Um, I'll just quickly talk before I put it on. So I wear a full face mask. I make sure I have the correct um, filters on it. So they're, they're certified for an organic vapor. And then I'm gonna put the mask on and I'm just gonna show you how it works. So as you can see there, I actually had a few issues kind of get that one working again. Um, I'd cleaned it all out, but it was just the fact that I couldn't get that torch going up to the correct temperature to get it working properly. Um, but nonetheless, you can see a couple of the issues that you have there. Like I have to wear these proper welding gloves to get that going. Um, and it's incredibly hot. So you, you can't put that down on any of your poly hives because um, you will melt them. Um, and it's just a bit fiddly, like it doesn't fit together very well, I don't feel. Um, and it, it, these are just the issues that I've kind of come to experience with it. So I'm really sorry for anyone who loves the gas fab. I'm not a fan. Um, I much prefer the Sublimox. I'm going to do a separate video showing you the differences between the two. So like I say, I do keep, I do keep a gas fab in the back of the van. And the reason that I do keep it in there is just for the instances where I can do a very, very quick vape on a colony where I might not be expecting it. So one of those examples is if I'm out and I'm collecting a swarm, I'll bring a swarm back here. I know there isn't any brood on it at all. I'll just give them a quick vape. And the reason I do that is that I know that there's going to be no brood at all. I can get all of the phoretic mites off in one go. It's a really, really good kind of practice to get into that when you get a swarm, just give it a quick vape. Um, now, I wouldn't want to have to kind of go back, get the generator, get all of the other kit, um, get the extension lead and come back and do it that way. So I just keep it in the car for those instances. Um, so one or two hives, it, it works fine. It's just when I'm going around, I find it really, really cumbersome to deal with. And that's the reason that I don't use it. Um, so like I say, it's not, it's, not to, it's not to put anyone off buying one. There is a use for it. It's good to kind of keep in your kit. It's good if you've maybe just got one or two hives and you don't want to spend the additional money on one of the more expensive items like the kind of uh, the, the ProVap or the Sublimox, which are two very similar items. Um, it's just that it doesn't kind of work with my, uh, my line of inspections and my line of treatment regimes. So that's it for today's video. A very, very short one, just kind of on the pros and cons of using the gas fat. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, when you're doing any oxalic sublimation, please use the proper PPE and please use the correct product, which is Apibioxal. Um, thanks very much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying these videos. Please hit the subscribe button um, and hit the little bell so you get notified each time a video comes up. We're getting closer and closer to the season now. The snowdrops are poking out. The crocuses are coming along. It's really, really not that long away at all. So um, fingers crossed for a good season for everyone. So thanks and I'll see you next time.